for the last several hours, I've been out here in the barn, out in the barnyard, power washing my four show rabbit stacker units. And I started thinking about how a simple video on just the things that you need to get started with meat rabbits, just a video about the things that you need, super simple video might be helpful for some of you that are just getting started in meat rabbits. This video is going to be very, very basic. So it's just going to be for those that might never have had rabbits before and don't necessarily know the things to get or how exactly to set things up. And that's kind of what this video is going to be. So for some of you that are more experienced, you might find this video a little bit boring or repetitive, but for others, I'm hoping that it helps you get started. Also, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Tiffany and I breed creme d'argent rabbits for meat show, breed preservation, fur, and a variety of other different reasons. I've been breeding rabbits since I was around 10 or 11 years old and I bred them all the way throughout my teenage years until I graduated high school and then I got right back into them as soon as my husband and I got our own house. So um, we have since moved from that first house that my husband and I bought. We were in the suburbs. So if you need some cage design ideas for maybe you don't have like a garage or a barn to put your rabbits in, I'm going to link the videos of me putting together my backyard hutch in the description below. So you might find that helpful if you don't necessarily have a barn set up like this. <laughs> <laughs> because like I said, we have moved. This is actually my childhood property, part of it anyway. Um, and we just kind of inherited this barn and it's definitely made rabbit raising so much easier because we actually have an enclosed structure for the rabbits to be in. So it's definitely easier to have them in a barn, but it's also a very feasible option to just have them in backyard hutches because that's what I did for several years before we moved here. So first things first, you are going to need cages. And for the sake of this video, I am not going to be talking about smaller breeds or breeds with special needs like Angoras or anything like that. I'm literally just going to be talking about your standard meat rabbit breeds. And I'm gonna put a list up on the screen of all of the breeds that I feel like make good meat rabbits. And I'm going to exclude the Angoras on this list just because I don't think that they would be a good beginner meat rabbit. Most of your meat rabbit breeds are around eight to 12 pounds, any variation of that really. Those meat type rabbits do very well in cage spaces that are around 30 by 30 inches, 30 by 36, 24 by 36. Those are all your standard sized cages for housing just a single rabbit. And yes, you do want to make sure that you only put one rabbit per cage. There are very few exceptions to the more than one rabbit per cage situation. Siblings sometimes work out a little bit longer but for the most part, once your rabbits reach adulthood especially, you want them to be in their own cage. Rabbits can get very territorial when they're in a cage system. Um, and for the sake of this video, we are going to be talking about cage systems. I'm not going to be talking about colonies. I have nothing against colonies, but we are going to be just talking about cage systems. <laughs> I prefer the all wire cage. And like I said, those cage dimensions that I mentioned before, I'm talking about the all wire cage. So all of these are all wire cages and then I built this wood frame around them. You don't have to build a wood frame if you buy stackers to begin with, but my cages were modular cages. I got them from KW Cages. There are a lot of cage dealers out there. So if you want to find a good cage dealer near you, try to find a show near you. You can go to the ARBA website and find local shows and typically at a show they usually have vendors at the shows and you are able to find cages or supplies that I'm going to be talking about and just all sorts of things. Vendors have all sorts of things so make sure you go check that out if you are looking for cage systems or supplies. There's lots of stacker designs that are actually all wire so Instead of having a wood frame like this, you can actually get all wire stackers, which are nice, but I do like the option of being able to remove the cages as well. The way that I've built this stacker unit, and I do have a video all about how I made these stacker units, um, but the way I built it, the cages are removable if I need to take them out. But when I just power wash them, I actually just roll them around and I'm able to power wash them just by rolling them out of the barn and then 
power washing them and then rolling them back in. So definitely go check out that video on how I made these cage frames if you want something similar. So like I said, when you are getting into your meat rabbits, you want to house all of your rabbits separately. So you wanna make sure that if you get a buck and two does, which is what a lot of people try to start out with, it's called a trio, then you wanna make sure that you house them all in separate cages. So for instance, you could have your buck in the bottom and then your two does in the top two if you have a stacker like this or if you have like a hutch, you know, you could house them all in separate cages in that hutch. So this is honestly your very basic cage system. Now, obviously it's missing a few pieces. I haven't actually put it all back together yet because I wanted to do that with you guys. So these cages have trays that go into them. And yes, my trays have seen better days, you guys. I can get these trays at either Tractor Supply or Rural King or any type of farm store usually has trays with those standard dimensions that I mentioned before. These are 30 by 30 trays. My cages here are 30 by 30 cages. So the trays fit in just by resting on top of each of my cages and they just slide in like that. And that makes sure that when each rabbit goes to the bathroom that it's not going to get on the rabbit below them. But before you put your trays in, you really wanna put something absorbent in the bottom of them. So what I recommend putting in the bottom of your trays here, you can put pine shavings in them and that works. But what I recommend is horse bedding pelletized pine pellets. They are really, really nice and they're very, very absorbent and a little goes a long way. So typically what I do when I put pine pellets in my trays is I just put a bunch of them in all four corners and then I just kind of give the middle a bit of a sprinkle because rabbits usually choose a corner or two to use the bathroom most often. So they are very clean little creatures. A little goes a long way. So here's our tray here. Hopefully you can see that well enough. And then here is our pine pellet bedding. And it says for horses and small animals on it. And it is, it is made for animals. So just make sure that the, the bedding that you buy or the pine pellets that you buy are specifically made for animals because there are pine pellets for smokers and things like that. And I see sometimes people getting confused online and they ask if they can use them for their animals and the answer is no because those are highly combustible. <laughs> you just wanna make sure that you get one that is specifically made for animals. So I usually just fill up like a bowl like this, put some in each corner. And then a little bit more. And honestly, that's all the pine pellets that I put in my trays. And I only have to empty my trays every three to four weeks maybe. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the pine pellets in my other two trays. And we're going to continue talking about our setup for our beginner meat rabbit setup. too far ahead of the cage system. I did want to quickly mention that if you are going to be building your own all wire cages, please make sure to use proper gauge wire bottom flooring. Proper gauge wire bottom flooring will help your rabbit's feet stay nice and healthy. You can get sore hocks from things like hardware cloth or thin gauge wire or wire that is too inappropriately spaced. So you just wanna make sure that you get proper gauge flooring and that is usually 16 to 14 gauge wire. If you are at all in the mindset of wire bottom flooring is bad for rabbits, please go check out the video that I have posted on wire bottom flooring for rabbits to see why it is just not true. There's a lot of myths surrounding housing rabbits and unfortunately that is one of them. It does not cause sore hocks as long as it is proper gauge and kept sanitary. It keeps them clean and it keeps you happy and it keeps them happy. So go watch that. Now let's talk about our feeders here. These are J feeders and they are clean. Rabbit pee and lime in the water and all of the things. Your equipment will not look new forever, guys. I promise it is clean. <laughs> 
But this is called a J feeder. Some people like this type of feeder, other people don't. I really like these types of feeders. I've had them for three years now and they work very well for me. Um, if you have moisture problems, they might not work as well for you because the feed can get stuck if you have a lot of moisture. Um, but as long as you keep them out of the rain and dry, they should work for you. J feeders are really cool because you can attach these to the cage and then they clip on with their little handles here. And then when they are on the side of the cage, which you can see with this one, you can just open it up, fill it with feed, and it, the feed goes into the cage. So it's pretty hands-off. And it's very nice when you have a rabbitry like mine. I do have several cages. I've got 20 here in the barn, so I do spend time with each and every rabbit, but when I'm feeding, I don't always wanna do that. So it's very nice when I can just open the feeder and feed my rabbits, make sure they have food. And yeah, it's really nice. These do have mesh on the back of them as well. You can see that. This is for sifting the feed. Sometimes when you buy pellets, they can have they can be a little bit dusty, and what that dust is called is fines. So the fines get sifted through the grate right there, so your rabbits only get clean pellets, free of the fines, they're not inhaling any dust or anything like that, um, and it makes for cleaner feed and happier rabbits. They make several different varieties of these. I got these specific ones at Tractor Supply, and like I said, they've held up for about three years now, and I don't think that I'm going to be replacing them anytime soon. Before I had the J feeders, I did use locking coop cups, and I liked those as well, but they do need cleaned a lot more because they don't have this on the bottom of them, so the fines kind of cake up after a while, and then you really have to just wash all of the coop cups, which it's not a big deal for some people. Um, I like cleaning rabbit things, but when I had this many cages, then I was just like, these didn't look so bad to me. <laughs> Any type of bowl for a feeder will work. Just know that if you don't have anything to sift the fines out, you might have to be cleaning a little bit more often. So that's just my two cents on feeders. Honestly, it's personal preference though. Just as long as you're feeding your rabbits, that's all that really matters. So while we're on the subject of feed, let's see what a good quality feed looks like. These are my rabbits wondering why they have not been put back in their stacker unit yet. They have been waiting very patiently, but they will go back very soon. My feed is your standard pelleted feed. So it looks like this. Most feeds that are made for rabbits that are for meat or commercial rabbits or show rabbits for that matter, um, most of the feeds are alfalfa based. So you wanna make sure that your feed is a complete feed. You wanna make sure on the bag it says complete rabbit feed. And that's exactly what it is. It's nutritionally balanced to meet the needs of the rabbit. So you don't technically have to add anything to it. It's all balanced, you're good to go. They just need their daily ration of pellets. And I usually give my creme de argens here around a cup of pellets a day per adult rabbit. Now for does that are pregnant or nursing or juniors that are growing out, they get unlimited feed here because I feel it is very important for those pregnant or nursing does to get as much nutrition as they can. Um, also for my rabbits to grow properly, we like to see five pounds by 12 weeks old for processing then we always wanna feed unlimited to the junior so they grow as fast as possible. The best pellets that you can give your rabbits are pellets that are freshly milled. I'm not really brand loyal. I do get the same brand every time I go pick up feed, but it's not really because I'm brand loyal. It's because the mill is right here in Indiana and I know that I get it fresh. So the freshest feed that you can find is the best feed that you can find as long as it's a complete rabbit pellet. That is the best that you can get. So just search around your state, search around your area, and see if you can find a pellet that is milled near you within a couple of hours of you and that you can get it very fresh. Beyond three to six months old, pellets really start to lose their nutritional value and you don't really want to use pellets that are older than that. They're just not gonna do it for your rabbits and you're gonna notice a lack of condition in your rabbits. So just wanna make sure that is fresh. Most rabbit feeds are around 16 to 18% protein. Mine here is 17% just because I love to be in the middle. 
And then a lot of pellets have between 20 to 23 or higher um, percentage of fiber. And fiber is very, very important for rabbits. You can never give your rabbit too much fiber, which is why that I am in the mindset, as long as we are talking about feed, I believe that you should give your rabbits hay. As we are talking about hay, I've got my trusty broken Menards bucket here. Like I said, I think that hay is important. There's a lot of breeders out there that are very adamant in the fact that hay is not necessary. Here is the thing, it's not necessary. If you're feeding a complete pellet, your rabbits are gonna live if you just feed the pellet. They're not gonna die. But my argument for this whole issue is, do I just want my rabbits to live or do I want them to thrive? And my answer to that is I want them to thrive. There have actually been studies done saying that if you don't give your rabbits hay and they don't have those bigger fiber particles to digest that go into the intestine, their intestines actually start to weaken. So they don't have these big pieces of fiber to digest, this really helps their intestines to keep moving regularly. It's just like if you or I were to eat whole wheat or more fiber in our diet, it really helps to keep us regular, which is very important for our growing junior rabbits, especially you can never give junior rabbits too much fiber. It's so good for them. And when we're talking about types of hay, Types of hay are very important as well. So you have your Timothy hay, you have your alfalfa hay, you have your orchard grass hay, your oat hay. All of them are good in their own ways. You do not wanna feed pure alfalfa to an adult rabbit, especially not an adult buck. It's not the best for them because it can give them way too much calcium and they can develop a problem called urinary calculi, which actually creates bladder sludge. It can cause basically like a kidney stone type issue for your male rabbits. So you don't wanna feed your male rabbits pure alfalfa. Um, it's probably just not a good idea to do so. Now a little bit of alfalfa in the hay is not gonna hurt them. As long as it's like under 50%, I think that you'd be fine. Um, I personally do feed alfalfa here and there, not usually pure alfalfa to my grown bucks, but definitely to my juniors because calcium is really good for growing bones. So I do give my juniors alfalfa here and there. The alfalfa that I get for my goats sometimes ends up with the junior babies. But this hay right here, this is just what you would consider orchard grass hay. So this is actually baled here on our property and it's literally just like horse hay. Um, and when you're thinking about rabbits, rabbits are basically, I've said this before, they're basically tiny horses. <laughs> so you just want to make sure that, you know, if you would feed it to a horse, it's probably actually okay for rabbits too. So this is just an orchard grass hay. It's not too leafy, it's not too rich. This is good for all of your ages of rabbits. When we lived in Fort Wayne, I had a Timothy Hay dealer and I do miss being able to go to their farm and picking up some nice second cut Timothy hay. If you want the best hay for your rabbits, second cut Timothy hay is where it's at. But like I said, orchard grass is fine. Oat hay is fine. Alfalfa is the only one that you need to be a little bit more mindful of who is actually eating it. And if we're talking about items that you want to get for your rabbitry, I would definitely recommend a nice bucket like this. I use this bucket for everything, not just feed, I use it for everything. And then a cup scooper. Every rabbit, I know that when I fill this up, that's the ration that all of my adult rabbits get. So um, most of them get a cup a day. And I just feed them once in the evening. So um, you can adjust that to your schedule. I used to do half a cup in the morning and half a cup at night, but I found that it's not really worth it because they do eat most of their food at night anyway. So I just switched to once a day and they are totally fine with that. They do usually have unlimited hay at all times just because I think it's good for fiber, like I said, but it's also good for boredom. So as long as your rabbits have something to chew on, they're happy. These are my all wire hay feeders and they are not fancy. They're just from a local cage dealer and they're just bent wire. They're actually extremely easy to make if you want to. Um, I just didn't have this particular type of wire when I wanted them, so I just figured it was easy to buy them. So these are my hay feeders. And rabbits, they do waste hay. They waste hay here and there. You can try to mitigate it. Um, I've tried putting hardware cloth on the back of this. Um, as long as they can still get to their hay, um, they'll waste a little bit of it, but that's normal. Why is it that all animals that need hay or like hay waste it? <laughs> Why is that? 
They are so picky, you guys. <laughs> now we're going back to the basics. So this is a water bowl that I have. These are really cool. They have locking tabs on the bottom that are made to twist on half inch by one inch wire, which is very, very useful because rabbits love to lift things and throw them around. So these are really nice because they're not able to do that. Um, I definitely recommend these. The only downside to these is that you, if you live in a really cold climate like we do in the winter, they do have a tendency to freeze solid and bust. So that is something to keep in mind. In the winter, I usually just don't fill them all the way up and that definitely does help. I actually only had one casualty this last winter because I was trying to be mindful about how full I was filling them and the temperatures and all of that. So that is just the only thing to keep in mind. I do have backup rubber bowls in case that does happen. Um, but they love to flip those rubber bowls. And <laughs> gosh, I wish they would just understand that they need their water. <laughs> Um, I do like to keep them very clean. The, as you can see, I, these are not new items. I wish that they were new items. I wish that I could just get all new items every year, but that is not real life. So the way that these work, and I will put you guys in the cage so you can see how exactly they screw down. I'm not 100% sure if you're gonna be able to see this, but like I said, there are tabs on the bottom and then our half inch by one inch wire, and then they just twist on, and then they can't lift them up. So it's definitely very, very nice. And then of course, I'm not trying to be condescending. All living things need fresh, clean water at all times. You can add apple cider vinegar to their water. You can do fancy stuff to their water, but in the end, they just need fresh, clean water. That's the most important thing. be amiss if I wasn't mentioning the items that I'm using as I'm making this video because I'm putting back together my stackers after power washing them. Get yourself a watering can. You don't have to open the cage to water your rabbits. Look at this. It fits right in like if you went if the cage door wasn't open you can stick your watering can in there just water them from the outside of the cage. I started doing this a year or two ago and I've never gone back. <laughs> I love using my watering can because there's less chance that you're gonna splash and it's just, it's a lot easier. So watering cans, very, very useful for watering your rabbits. This is more of an optional thing, okay? Some of you might roll your eyes at this, but rabbits really like toys. These little bell balls, they are the best thing. They're actually parrot toys. Um, you can buy different ones like this on Amazon as well. And then if you've got little cat balls, and these are all pretty old, probably need to update all of their toys, but I really enjoy giving my rabbits toys because they do love to pick these up and throw them around and it's really cute. So toys, not necessarily a necessity, but it's enrichment. So in my opinion, it's a necessity. Now we have the rabbits themselves that need to go back in the cage. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all three of these rabbits in their cages. And then I'm gonna talk about a couple other items that you might need as you're starting rabbits, as your herd starts to grow, and all of that. Now that our rabbits are put back into their stacker, I went ahead and rolled back to the back of the barn. I promise it's not as dark back there as it looks in this video. My camera can only do so much, guys. <laughs> One thing that you might wanna consider when you have meat rabbits is getting yourself a scale. Now this is my Winco scale. Any type of scale will work, honestly. People like to use baby scales. People will use scales like this. People use digital scales. I used to use a digital scale with like a baking dish on top of it. But if you're really gonna be getting into rabbits, I do recommend a nice analog scale like this. I really do like this scale a lot. It's called a Winco. And actually the top of it is a homemade basket that I made. These scales are just great if you wanna track your weights, if you wanna weigh your meat, if you 
just a bunch, you'll find different uses for it all the time. I always use this thing. So a scale might be something to look into if you are getting into rabbits. And if you are going to be breeding rabbits, it means you are going to be having baby rabbits. So you are going to need a nest box. There are lots of different nest box designs out there, you guys. I like to make my own nest boxes out of wood. They are super cheap. I actually just made a video and a blog post about how to make your own wooden nest box and I laid it out very, very simply for you guys. So make sure to go check that video out. I will link it below and up there. And yeah, my nest boxes are all wood and they have a fourth inch by fourth inch hardware cloth on the bottom. I've had many, many successful litters in these nest boxes, you guys. So if you are going to be having baby bunnies, you're gonna wanna have a nest box prepared prior to them arriving. So this is something that is very important in a meat rabbit program. Another thing that you might wanna consider investing in is a carrying cage. Now I have a lot of carrying cages. You can see them all up there. Carrying cages are great. Even if you're not showing, they are great if you are selling a rabbit and you need to transport the rabbit. Um, they have wire bottom flooring, so it keeps your rabbits out of their mess at all times. These carrying cages that I have are from a local cage dealer, so I can't necessarily point you in the direction of where to get them. The compartments open individually, so they're really, really nice. And then I also have some coop cups in there, which you can see. The coop cups just attach onto the side of the carrier on the inside and they allow you to feed in your water your rabbit on the go. So they're really, really nice. Definitely recommend getting a carrying cage if you are going to be transporting rabbits in any situation. One of the things that I'm not going to be touching on in this video, you guys, is med supplies. I might do an entirely different video on that because there's lots of different things that I recommend people to have on hand for the rabbits, and I don't feel like it's appropriate for maybe this beginner rabbit video, but if that is something that you would like to see, make sure to comment below and let me know because I have a lot of a lot of opinions and a lot of different med supplies in my rabbitry um, and I'd love to share what I do with all of it, but not in this video. <laughs> I have been talking a lot about my grow out hutches. These are one of the best things that has ever happened to my rabbitry. <laughs> And I say that with full sincerity, you guys. I love, love them. One of the reasons why you want a grow out hutch is because when you have a litter of eight or 10, which some of these meat rabbits are very prone to have large litters. I know for me, it's very common to have a litter of eight to 10. And so when you have these large litters, you don't always want them to stay in those smaller cages for long periods of time. Like when your rabbits are around like, five weeks old, five to six weeks old, they're starting to get extremely cramped in a cage that is 30 by 30 or 30 by 36. You need to be able to have a larger space for your babies to grow out. So these grow out hutches are seven feet long by 30 inches wide. I have little handles on the front of them. They open like this and we have these taps here, little kickstand, if you will, that holds the lid up. I'm able to do all of my chores. Believe it or not, there are 14 rabbits in this grow out hutch. I don't think that you can see what I'm talking about, but they are all hiding in the den area. <laughs> but there's a bunch of them in there. But that's the point though, is that they have so much room that they're not cramped and they are very comfortable and I can grow them out for longer periods of time, which was the whole goal. Because with a rare breed like the Creme Argent, I want to keep my babies until they're 12 to 16 to 20 weeks old and I can't do that if I don't have big spaces to house them in. So I really love these because they are so versatile, they are so useful, and I've loved housing my rabbits in them. If you want to have a bunch of baby rabbits, you're going to need larger spaces to put them and a grow out hutch like this is a great option. So like I said, I will link the plans below. You can also do multiple different types of things. You can do multiple cages, you can do rabbit tractors, you can do all of that. But I love this and I will scream it from the rooftops. These grow out hutches are the best thing that I have done for my rabbit tree in a really long time. I need you guys to know that I am a purist, creme de argent breeder, but I also have these cute little mongrel babies that are half Netherland Dwarf, half Creme d'Argent because <laughs> I've been wanting to create something like this for a really long time. They are so cute. Look at them. They're like nine weeks old. 
they're so little. <laughs> so you guys, I hope that this video is helpful to you. If you are just getting started in meat rabbits and you're just needing to know what is the basic simple setup, what are the tips that I need to know as I'm getting started with all of the things that I need or you know, all of that. I hope that this video really helped you in planning that out. And like I said, if you don't have a barn or, you know, something that you can have like a stacker cage system in, I do have videos of how I made like my outdoor hutch when we lived in the suburbs. And I also show in my past videos how I put my rabbits in my garage at one point. So there are lots of, lots of different options for housing rabbits. They're not just one option. There are a million different ways to do things with rabbits. This is just kind of a beginner's guide on the things that you need, just very basic. So. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you'll continue watching and with that I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!